guys. It's Yarn Hellion Season 2, Episode 29. Uh, we're going to talk about pattern design today. This is the first part of a two-part episode. Um, I'm going to tell you everything I know about designing, knitting, and crochet patterns. Uh, and I'll give you all my tips and tricks and all my secrets. And I don't have any secrets. Uh, and some resources that can help you on your pattern design journey. And I think it should be fun. Um, I'm Christine Parker of Christine Parker & Co. This is Sarah Flynn of Superfine Yarn Co. I'm like mentally checking the boxes of, did I say everything I'm supposed to say? <laughs> um, anything you would like to check in on? What are you doing? There's something that smells really good down here. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go investigate. Anything new with you in the past couple weeks? Um, I started blending my own tea. What? I got this book. Um, this book is by Sarah Farr. It's called um, Healing Herbal Teas. Mm. I started reading it. It was so interesting. Mm. And so I just brought like, I got like little jars and a label maker. And so I've been Fun. putting like, um, and then and the lady in the book, she says, oh, I made some real terrible teas, but you'll <laughs> yeah. get better at it. So um, I was experimenting and then thinking, I'm just getting, gonna get like crazy. And then yeah, made, made some bad ones. Yeah. But it's really fun. So, and then I got really into reading about like what each one does. Mm -hmm. And it, there's like a whole insane huh. world. And then of course you can grow everything. Ooh. Not everything, but like so many things that you need for it. And there's just, it's insane. So I got like every book at the library mm -hmm. that was about like different teas and blending. So I have um, little recipes that I could like base stuff off of. Cool. And then you can kind of grow from there. But this lady is really cool. She does it by like the season. So she's like, in the spring, you need like restorative mm. herbs and like all this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just have never thought about all of this stuff. So it's, it's really, really neat. So I've been doing like calming ones at night and I've been taking a thermos to work. Oh my God. So it's really, really cool. So. It never even occurred to me that that is like a thing that you could do is blend your own teas. Where where do you get the ingredients? I've gotten them a few different places. I went to some, um, I went to uh, Asia Plaza and went to Park to Shop and got some there. Mm -hmm. um, I got some online at Mountain Rose Herbs. I started all this, there was a guy on TikTok and he teaches you how to make like more like traditional chai where you grind it up mm. and then like do like cardamom, cloves, black pepper, mm -hmm. like and then do it on the stove and it was so good and that oh, just started man. me on like i had like little containers for the cloves and then and cardamom and then it just like that's so fun took off. it's really really fun so i've been nerding out about that so i have some <laughs> herbs um that should be getting delivered today they came from oregon this mountain roses in oregon cool. so some of like the weirder um herbs there's like um slippery elm which is good for like your throat and like some kind of you know weird ones you can't just like buy in a regular store so i so like i don't i can't i don't know if we've talked about it before but some of you might know that i'm like allergic to everything that's in food yeah food additives like artificial sweeteners and msg and all the preservatives and stuff yeah. and it's so fucking hard to find tea blends that don't, don't have, have extra like stuff. yeah like oh, weird see? i can make you know some. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So now I'm like, oh my god! Like I never even thought of trying to make my own. I'm excited. I smell a new hobby. What kind <laughs> of um? Do you like like minty things? Do you like like um? Is there certain types of teas? Do you like fruity, fruity. teas? Yeah, I, I was just teas. of course you can buy like already dried like lemon and orange peel, mm -hmm. but I thought it's really easy to like do them yourself like in the oven. So Get I was gonna out. make some of myself. Oh my gosh! Hopefully, trying to escape. Yeah. Come this way. <laughs> Come here. You can go patrol. The neighborhood. Um, That's so fun. So it's really, really fun. And then I was telling you, of course, then I'm like into, I've been really good. I think this is my fifth week, fifth or sixth week of meal prepping mm -hmm. on Sunday. And it's helped me to save money. I'm like eating better. Mm -hmm. I snack a lot. Like I like snack a ton in between, but I'm not eating like Shake Shack downtown. <laughs> yeah. like, like I have nothing. Let me run out and get like a piece of pizza, you know? Right. So it helps in that way. Yeah. And I know... Like I'm making like stuff that I like too, which is like fun. Yeah. Instead of being stuck and like not wanting anything that's carry out. So that's awesome. Um, Good for you. So then of course down the tea path, I'm like, 
well, I want to make kombucha mm-hmm. and I want to do bread. And, <laughs> yeah. ah, ah, I could just like have a hobby for like every single thing. So You're I'm trying not to go a, overboard. A oh my gosh, I really <laughs> would. I grew up on a farm. Oh, um, cool. My parents are, my mom like did like a whole hippie, like mother earth. Mm-hmm. Um, I was born in 77, so I think they got married in 68 and then bought a farm Mm -hmm. and did like everything except like, um, like it wasn't like a working farm, but Mm -hmm. she had like a huge garden and chickens and like grew everything. Do you have a garden currently? I don't. I'd really like one. Um, The neighbors like um, in like a courtyard with like rental houses Mm -hmm. and we do have like a nice little, you could really make it work. My neighbors like around their whole house, they have little beds and then like a, down the whole side of the driveway, they hmm. plant stuff every year. And I just haven't done it. Mm-hmm. You grow things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a couple little raised um, garden beds. And, and what did you do last year? What did I grow last? Last year was like a weird year. I feel like it was so wet that every, or maybe it was cold and it stuff like took forever to get started. But I grew, um, I like to do tomatoes and zucchini and cucumbers. Um, I did a bunch of flowers last year. That was really fun. I did um, like zinnias and dahlias and marigolds. And um, I like I like to do different things like every year. Like this year, so I bought like a crap ton of seeds like in February. And I'm like, I'm gonna get my plant baby started. I have like a little, like a grow light in the basement. Yeah. Um, I didn't start any of my seeds. But I bought I bought like seed packets to try like green onions Ooh, and beets that. and um, no beets no beets for Sarah um, delicata squash oh my gosh I love yeah, squash squash um, I don't remember what else I got one but. of these um, I worked at a few different food co-ops back in the day um, one had the best it was squash quesadillas and it oh. sounds like you just like use the squash like you would the meat pretty much and mm-hmm. you season it like you would any like Mexican mm-hmm. thing. Uh, peppers, even like just taco seasoning kind of mm-hmm. stuff, and then just like yeah, put it in tortillas and grill it, and a little bit of cheese. Oh my god, <laughs> so that sounds good. awesome! Yeah, it's really good. That was my first like really really liking squash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun to grow. Like zucchini is really fun because it like it you're supposed to pick them when they're like kind of small, like like cucumber size. But if you forget or you don't see it, <laughs> you'll get like humongous dog sized zucchini. I love zucchini. Mm-hmm. Oh my Me gosh. too. Zucchini with like Parmesan. Yeah. Ooh, I'm so excited. So now I'm like, like I didn't start any of my seeds. So I'm going to have to go to like um, the garden center and get plant babies to, to start. And it's like becoming time. Like as soon as the, I was going to say. Like, yeah. End of April. Do you have to like, okay. I didn't know when you waited till. Yeah. Yeah. And it, after the first frost. So in Ohio, that's usually like May. late. Yeah. It can be anywhere from like late April to late may i mean you know our weather is so bizarre what are you doing down there she's just making sure everything is like in order everything's okay it's okay do you want to come back up here you can jump it (laughs) (laughs) thank you for making sure everything is a tip-top shape um so there's that and then um comic-con hasn't told me if i'm out yet oh my god it's into it's not this weekend it's next weekend and you still don't know if you're in. still don't know wow. so like how if you're a vendor who doesn't live in cleveland right supposed to get an airbnb and yeah all of your stuff i'm just like baffled so i mean it's their first year managing it and the girl was like oh you'll know in a week and that was like a week and a half mm-hmm. ago so um i'm making a bunch of geeky yarn and you guys might benefit because mm-hmm. i'm gonna show you some today mm-hmm. and it's been really really fun and you know if i don't go i don't go but it's kind of like eh. so i've got to look and see like i put in like a you know half of my booth down so i gotta see like what you get refunded or what's your application fee oh gosh Mm. so that's really annoying yeah really weird and frustrating but you have more exciting news than i do i do i met my nibbling he came home last two weeks ago um and he's just perfect he's (sighs) just I love, I just love holding babies. I could just hold a baby and sit quietly and just look at the baby. Newborns are so great. And then they like poop or cry and I'm like, I'm there done. you go. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so yeah, that was really fun. He's he's a sweetie. He's doing really well. He's healthy and he's growing and you know, so that was good because he was in the NICU for 38 days. Wow. And yeah, we weren't sure what was going on. So he's good. Um, that was, I found out that I can hold a baby like right here and knit. And still knit. And still oh knit, yeah. So I was working on, I have my um, make along hat that I've been working on and I just like, he was, sw my brother like swaddled him in his uh, his little blankie and I just propped him in my elbow and Gosh. kept my hands free and I could still knit, it was so nice. Um, so that was good. And then I sprained my ankle <laughs> last week, which was not good. Uh, it was, like I was doing so good with like my walking and I was like moving more and whatever, I'm feeling really good. And you know, and then I fell down. I was carrying Dottie cause she, she's blind. So she can't, she can't do stairs. She'll just fall down the stairs and it's sad. So we pick her up when we take her outside, we have to pick her up and we live in a ranch. So there's only two stairs to get out of our house. But I fell down these two stairs with a dog in my, in my arms, just slid down <laughs> the two stairs on my butt spray my ankle so that sucked i've got a brace and i'm starting to feel better finally but that sucked it's no fun at all mm -mm. it's no fun it's just not fun at all so what else did i have on here was that all right oh i learned how to do my um I, so this past winter i bought a like a photo printer and um a silhouette cameo four which is like a like i have my laser cutter but the laser cutter can't cut vinyl because it's plastic and it will create chlorine gas, which will corrode the Glowforge machine and kill me. So, <laughs> so I'm like, so if you want to make like stickers or, um, you know, like vinyl decals mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, you have to, you have to have like an actual blade to cut vinyl. So I got a, the cameo cutter is kind of like a cricket cutting machine yeah so I finally learned how to use it and I've just been like crazy making stickers so I made you <gasps> I made you. you a yarn halyon oh sticker <laughs> I need one for my new tea mug yeah nice thank you so that's been really fun I um I made like a bunch of really weird stickers and put them in the um the March uh flare club packages that just went out this past week so if you get a really weird sticker it's because I learned how to use my uh my cutter so exciting so that's it's waterproof but not dishwasher safe thank you yes the other ones that i make like if you're in the um if you get them through my website or the um the flare club those are they like the website where i get them printed says that they're not dishwasher safe but everyone who's dishwashered that i dishwasher <laughs> yeah. the ones i have from they're you like, yeah it's fine but f these ones that i printed myself so like it's totally waterproof but it'll something about like the heat and the soap will um the color will fade. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, what else? So um, everybody's been working on the make along. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how many people are doing <laughs> so it. So many people. Yeah, it was really cool. I was surprised. So thanks guys for hanging out and doing your make along projects. We'll, um, we'll we can check in with ours. Are, are you making progress? How's your reach hiker? Uh, Oh my gosh, it's such a good pattern. And that little tip with the, so on the first row, there's a knit front and back, mm -hmm. the first stitch. Um, and every, it's an eight row repeat. So every first row, you, and it's a little like funny, but in the knit front and back, you're making the two stitches, you put the stitch marker in between. So like at the end of that row, you can look and there's one stitch before the stitch marker. And then there's usually a knit in front and back every time you're mm -hmm. on the other side of that stitch marker so it'll tell you what row you're on yeah. if you put it down yeah and don't pay attention yeah. which is awesome <laughs> um and it's such a good pattern because each right. like little like you feel like you're accomplishing something mm -hmm. like, each time you do a little too and i thought it would be farther along but i'm not but it's really cute oh man that yarn i know with the sparkles so and the good. neon and like i really never do like black like, black yarn yeah like, it's just and um to knit it actually i'm not sure probably they did the pink before and then did the black because it's really hard to like the have not have a black like take over yeah anything. so oh you're thinking like how they dyed it yeah, yeah yeah definitely so either like had dyed the pink and you can make like the yarn kind of like bump up in the pan and then mm -hmm. do the black like in the bottom 
I don't know. Mm, impressive. Check. Yeah, very impressive. So I said before, but um, ooh, deep dyed yarn, pigment, velvet underground. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I dug out one of my mid. I had um, from uh, Ann Arbor in the fall mid mitten designs. I had one of those. Oh dog yeah, cool. Aww. things. So I was digging through. We love dogs here at Yarn House. Oh yes, even ones that uh, patrol a lot. <laughs> She was like scream barking before we started recording. Oh Someone dared to walk past. So I've been making my fluid slouchy beanie. Oh, and you didn't do a pico edge. I didn't this time. Yeah. I just did. Um, so like the pattern you do. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> She's like. <laughs> the pattern um, you're supposed to do a. You like knit your two inches of your inside cuff and then do a purl row to like make the fold. And then knit another two inches before joining the double brim. But I just did, I just kept knitting. I knit for four inches. Um, What's the purl row deal? The purl row uh, just makes it so it's easier to fold. Like, okay. Yeah, it That's like cool. makes a cleaner edge. Um, but I wanted to see what it looked like without. So this is just a like a double brim. That looks really good. See. I always, yeah, that's the only thing about like single weight hat, like my ears, like the yeah. wind downtown just goes right through. So that's really smart. So I'm making pretty, dog hair, making pretty good progress. I knit, I like to put um, like a progress keeper. I to see. When, what, I, um, when I start a row, like when I pick up my knitting for the day, I put a progress keeper, um, like on the first stitch of the first row. Uh, and then it can, so like the other day when I was holding my nephew, I knit like two inches on this hat and it was just nice to see how, how much far. it's, yeah, how far you get. Cause if you're trying to measure, like, it's hard to see when you see how far you've gotten, if you're just looking at it from the bottom. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that made me feel good. And I will for sure be able to finish this for the make along. Um, there's somebody who finished a hat and started another hat. I know. <laughs> people are like, there's, there's more than one person who's finished a project already, like in the two weeks that. Oh, my gosh. What's today? We started April 1st. Today is the 11th. Well, you'll see it on Friday, which is, I don't know the date then. My math is bad. Uh, but yeah, like in the two weeks since we started, that's I'm deeply impressed. I don't think I've ever knit anything in two weeks. No. <laughs> I did. I got the fluid beanie pattern mm-hmm. so my plan was to finish this and start it but we'll mm-hmm. see how that goes and then we have our megs and co oh yeah which is our progress. yes keep sharing your um your projects on uh instagram with the hashtag one skein mal and then uh if, when we're done with the make along on um may friday may 6th for in the next episode we'll pick a winner to win that skein of yarn I can't. I can't record anymore. We're just gonna have. I can do real pup, snuggle time puppy here. Snugs. This is nice. Do you have any other projects you've been working? I on? I do. I actually made progress. I watched Needles at the Ready, and they watched us and saw that I had made oh one gosh. of these because Ray was <laughs> making. So I was like, Yay! <laughs> so I'm not as far as he is, but I got to my. I'm almost to where I'm gonna put on my fourth color. Oh, so, that's fun. Isn't that nice? I mean, I am like, and this takes, I mean, I spent a lot of time yeah. <laughs> doing this. But you can see it's really cool because it's like a um, like a parallelogram. Yeah, yeah. So like the one you're increasing on one side and decreasing on the other. Mm-hmm. And then it's so cool because each time you switch to a new mini. So this is the other side. But yeah, so this is, was the first color, second color, third color. So, and then second color, third color color okay yeah because it's two color brioche yeah okay so it's cool each side like it'll be like one and two two and three is that correct Mm -hmm. yeah three and four yeah so it's so cool i love it please don't bark please don't bark oh 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 we could just not we could just not bark it's possible we could try it so and i'm excited because now i'm getting into like some i'm gonna go into like pink Mm -hmm. and then is that your 2020 this is 20 20 2020 yeah. advent okay so i didn't keep a 2021 like dumb dumb so <laughs> of course i kept telling myself well you haven't even knit 2020 and yeah. now that i'll have it and then i'll be like mm. but um so yeah then it goes into i think it goes this way and then it goes into 
grays. Mm-hmm. Next. And I'm really bad at documenting the really sad thing. I had to go back to you had taken a picture a while ago oh. of it. And that's what I used to use to look at the, <laughs> the order of it. Because I'm, I'm really bad. I had, had him sitting around like, I'm going to take a picture of it and put it up and yeah. show people what it looked like. Never did. Yeah. So I know how that um, goes. But yeah, it's um, it's really, really, really fun. Because like, well, uh, oh, and squish it. I know there's not a lot to squish, but it's like <gasps> nice. It Squishy. makes nice fabric. Mm-hmm. Because you're doing so much work. Yeah. Well, that's the only thing I hate about brioche is that like it's it takes so long to build up because it's two rows for every row it's two rows yeah yeah and I oh well and my other stuff oh I will say I said something last time oh I was there's the wrong stitch at the beginning yeah because I'm not reading the pattern oh. two rows you do knit front and back after the cat the um I cord edge. Mm-hmm. The other two rows you do knit to behind and back loop. And oh. so that's why my count was off because I was doing knit front and back every single time. Oh, and okay. not reading just because I saw the K, F. I was like, yeah, oh, <laughs> iron. Like, why would you not read? So it is absolutely all my fault and not the pattern's yeah. fault, which I could have told you, but I was very <laughs> mad at the time. So that's been figured out. What was the other thing? Oh, when I added my first, um, when I did my first change and added my third color, I didn't slide, you know, you oh. go across and then you slide. Mm-hmm. I didn't slide it and I started from the wrong side. Oh, it took no. me like three rows before I'm like, this is wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> so now I'm reading the directions. <laughs> it's going much better, if you can believe it. It's almost like the patterns <laughs> There's <something> work. <laughs> to it. Somebody actually paid attention when they were like writing this thing. So anyway, I'm really in love with this. Good. So That's I've lovely. I've been keeping it at work and doing it on my breaks and my lunch. Mm-hmm. And since I've been packing my lunch, I have like a whole lunch hour where I'm not like, yeah. I'm not like picking up stuff. So, so, so fun. And I've got my knitterly things, baby Yoda bag. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's not. It's Allegheny Fiber Company. Fiber Arts. What was it? what did the other one? Knitterly things is what I did. My um striped my um self striping socks. Mm hmm. So let me see. That again. This uh makes me think of. Did you see balanced skein on Instagram made a new things you hear in on knitting podcast uh, reel? <laughs> like I think it's this, but it's this. Was that one of them? <laughs> No, it was just like, she's like, I got a new project bag. Let me show you. And just holds up like a plastic bag from like the grocery store yes, or whatever. I saw that. <laughs> it's really funny. Because that, that is what it's like in knitting podcasts. We do that. I know. Her re- Oh my God, her reels crack me up. And also I'm, I feel attacked. <laughs> oh. Well, I feel like that is a good segue talking about patterns that actually work um, to segue into pattern design. Do you want a chihuahua on your lap still? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, yes. I can scooch her up whenever you're... No, we're fine. Are <laughs> okay. you kidding me? I can cuddle all day. I told you I can knit with a baby in my arm. I can podcast with a dog in my lap. Yes, it is. All right, so I've I've heard people who are like, I really want to get started with pattern design, but I don't know where to start. And I would say, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. I would say if you are to the point in your knitting. Oh, also, real quick, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say knitting and knit this whole time, but I mean knitting, crocheting. Tunisian crochet, uh, and even probably like, I don't know, are there patterns for spinning? Any of your, maybe even sewing, any of your fiber sewing arts. Sewing patterns, yeah. That's, uh, knitting is the synonym I'm gonna use for all of these. So if you're to the point in your knitting career where you feel comfortable modifying an existing pattern, I'd say you're probably ready to like start designing your own stuff. Cause like the next step then is just writing everything down that you do and making sure you're not copying, um, copying other stuff. So um, 
when I got started, I realized like I was heavily modifying existing patterns to the point where I was like practically rewriting the pattern, my like in in a way that made sense for my brain. Uh, and then I knew I was like, okay, I can I can probably make my own actual design. So I brought some of the patterns that I modified. Just to give you an idea and you can like I'll tell you what patterns these are and you can look them up on like Ravelry or, or whatever and be like that doesn't even look like <laughs> the original <laughs> pattern so this is um, one of the like most popular hats on Ravelry it's the whoops do you want to smell it yes. this is the this is the sock head slouch hat by Kelly McClure. So, but I wanted I wanted a hat for that I could wear with a big ponytail. Oh so it's a, I made a tube. Um, you know the the real pattern has like the hat increases for the crown, so it fits like a hat. But I what I did was I knit this huge long tube and then I sewed it down inside. Oh my gosh. Um, the brim, so it's like a double thick hat with, and it looks like a hat, I'm not gonna put it on cause I'll ruin my pretty curls. <laughs> but when you put it on, it looks like a hat. Uh, it looks like a slouchy hat and then you just have like your pony uh, sticking out the top. Um, Love the yarn. Thanks, this is Hedgehog Fibers. I don't know what the colorway is cause it was a like a, a mystery club, club um, colorway a couple years ago. So that was one I um, modified. This is the Bluebell Hill scarf by Jocelyn Tunney. And it's supposed to be a scarf. Like it's, you know, you start at one end and knit and then cast off. Um, but I wanted an infinity scarf because I don't like scarves when like the ends are dangling and they like get in your way and they dip in the toilet when you go to flush <laughs> or whatever. So I wanted a um, like an infinity scarf. So I figured out, I like rewrote the pattern stripes to figure so that they'd be like evenly placed in a circle. I had to like make a spreadsheet and, and stuff to figure this out. And then I just, um, wherever the end is, I just did um, Kitchener stitch. So that was that. It looks great. You can't see the, Thanks. where it connects. Yeah, this was, uh, I think I, I think it's a free pattern and I think my notes are on my Ravelry, like how I, how I modified it. So, um, if you wanted to make one of these, you could go do that. And then this one is a heavily modified boneyard shawl by Stephen West. If you've ever done the boneyard shawl, it's a triangle and it's got like, every so often it's got a row of like a garter bump, but I did garter bump stripes so that the, the this yarn is so cool. It's, um, it's self-striping shawl yarn. So there's no, there's, it's one skein of yarn that's dyed so that like you get- You didn't have to weave in a hundred ends. Yeah. It's so cool. It's just two, you know, your two ends. And I don't know how they mathed the stripes. I but was just gonna say, yeah, how did it like work out that the color change was each? I don't know. Wow. It's magic. Yeah. So this is, I should have written it down. It's Gage Dye Works is the, uh, brand and the colorway is concrete and tulips. Oh um, and then so I, wait, so is the gray part of it too, or is it a gray yeah. and a, that's crazy? Yeah, was it made for this shawl? It's it's made for triangle shawls, wow. so you could do like this. Uh, you like, could do any shot. pattern. I know it's self striping is so hard. Yeah, so with, I, I, any triangle shawl it would work for. And then I added a Pico bind off at the bottom. So like this doesn't even look like a boneyard shawl. I just used the boneyard shawl as like my jumping off point. Um, so those are patterns I modified. Um, let's talk about, let's check my notes first, Christine. So, let 
once you like are comfortable modifying, cause like all you're doing is, you know, you might substitute in a different bind off or, you know, you might prefer a different increase or decrease. Uh, so you might change that in an existing pattern. You might um, add some shaping to a sweater to like make it more fitted. Uh, you know, there's all things that you can do to modify a pattern. So I feel like pattern design is, that's all that it is, is you're like taking an existing garment like a sweater, you know, it's, there's really not that many different ways to knit a sweater, like a plain sweater. It's just, there's a certain shape, you know, and then you sub in like a different neckline and a different hem. And like, you know, you might put in a stitch pattern or color work or whatever. That's all designing is. It's taking the basic shape of um, a garment and then plugging in your own preferences and, you know, the, th the like the techniques that you like to use and then just writing it all down. So I think I started with uh, like scarves and cowls because um, it does take a minute to like figure out how to sub in, how to like get a, a stitch pattern to fit inside a certain stitch count. I'm not gonna explain it here. That's, that would be like a whole other thing. It's there's a million, beginner. yeah, that's not, that's not for this episode, but there's a million different tutorials and you know, and oh, where's my books? If you don't have a stitch dictionary, that's a really great resource uh, to have in your arsenal because like if you want to make um, a scarf or a cowl or a baby blanket, it's like a square. There's no weird shaping or anything like that. So then you can find a stitch that you like in your stitch dictionary and it'll tell you um, how many how many stitches you need in your repeat. So like this one is. 12 stitches plus nine. So you need a multiple of 12. So say, well, let's say 24 plus nine. I'm not gonna be able to math that in my head. Um, and then, so you will start your garment. Am I making sense? I was just gonna ask, I don't understand what the plus nine is. So, is that the edges? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I said I wasn't gonna try to explain this and then I started to explain Sorry, it. Sorry, now I'm... No, that's okay. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> so, putting a stitch pattern into a square like a scarf or a blanket it's pretty easy but the trouble comes is when you've got like a weird shape like a triangle or um gotcha. trying to fit it into socks or um a sweater or something like that yeah. it is doable it's just there's more math involved um i find that like sketching out uh, sketching out my idea and like making a diagram can help. I do a lot of, um, I find that like if I write by hand or like take notes, I can see it better mm -hmm. than if it's just like in my head or even on a screen. Um, so anyway, this is probably my favorite stitch, stitch dictionary that I have. It's the Knit Stitch Dictionary. It's 250 Essential Stitches by De Debbie Tomkeys. And then I also have a matching cro mm. crochet stitch dictionary. Um, I've made so many like baby blankets with this crochet dictionary. And then there's also dictionaries of like different borders. That's amazing. So like these are crochet oh edges and they're, you know, you'll get the there's chart. so many more options there's for crochet so edges. So many options of, you know, like crazy cool things that you can do for like a blanket edging, or maybe you wanna put it on the edge of a scarf. Um, I've got knit, I haven't used this one much yet, but this is like knitting, knitting edges. And there's some pretty cool things that you can do. It's just a totally different technique with than uh, crochet. Ooh, this is like a braided cable, that's cool. Oh my gosh. How do you do that on the edge? Must don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, some I think you can add after, some you incorporate into the um the actual like garment. Like it you you knit it in as you're um as you're making the like body of the piece. Mm -hmm. oh, I mentioned sketches and diagrams, but also like a mood board can help. Like I like to make a Pinterest board with like, you know, I'll pull like inspiration from all different places. Like one of my patterns. Oh, I don't have, do you have the Hildebrandt cowl? 
Who has it? I do. We don't want me to grab it. Uh, sure. <laughs> so uh, I was talking about inspiration, and this is the Hildebrandt cowl, which uh, Sarah and I did as a collab using Sarah's yarn. Um, and I took inspiration from the architecture of the building where she has her studio. So the Hildebrandt building becomes the Hildebrandt shawl. So it's like a brick building, obviously. And then there's this like cool um, detail on the brickwork, like up uh, by the roof. That it's like this like diamond decoration. So I made some little lace uh, diamonds. Um, Touching this is making me want to knit another one because this yeah. is a fun pattern to make. And the Pico Edge. So and the Pico Edge, yes. Love that. So, I mean, what I was saying is, is you can get inspiration from every anywhere. Like, I know Stephen West has an architecture, um, some architecture-inspired designs. Like, he's, I think there's one from, like, the Sears Tower and, mm -hmm. you know, different buildings around the world. Ooh, another uh, super helpful thing if you're like interested in pattern design is taking classes um there's classes online like through craftsy and skillshare um vogue knitting I think. oh do they yeah i did them in person at one of those in milwaukee mm. and then um they have them online oh okay or virtual oh i'll have to look into that um if you're like in a knitting group in the community like here in cleveland we have the north coast knitting guild uh, and they do um they'll like once a year they'll hire a designer to come in and teach everybody you know do a weekend worth of classes and it can it doesn't have to be a class on like designing patterns it can be a class on you know how to shape a sweater to fit your body or like cool bind offs and cast on techniques or like you know how to do like one class i took was how to do um how to make plaid you like you like knit ribbing and then you take a crochet hook and weave in vertical stripes nice. like sti yeah so like just things like that you know there those are different techniques that you can end up using in um in uh your designs so once you have all your like your inspiration and your you know your idea or whatever then you can pick your needles and pick your yarn and go to town and i will tell you there's a lot of swatching which is there's just a lot of trial and error you have to figure out like first you have to know you have to know your gauge because you have to put it in the pattern which is really sad so you have to knit a gauge swatch don't try to design a pattern without knitting a gauge swatch because your tech editor will be like oh what's your gauge and you'll have to like make it up and hope that it fits your pattern and it's not good knit your knit your gauge swatch if you're gonna design a pattern um, and it, like, I'll like make, I'll make mini projects to like test out the different techniques. Like the, um, the retro world hat I had to, I can't even tell you how many hat, little hat tops I had to make to get that spiraling stitch, like decrease pattern to work. Oh my God. But it, it's worth it. Cause that I, really I cool. think that hat top is really cool. So it's a lot of, a lot of trial and error, a lot of swatching. And the other thing is you have to write everything down every step you like write down everything you do the directions for each you know each row you want to keep track of your stitch counts um your your gauge uh you know are you picking up stitches on this side of the scarf before you pick up stitches on this side like you know all that stuff you want to take really good notes um the better notes you have the more the easier i feel like it's going to be to actually sit down and write the pattern you'll have more to pull from um, and the fewer questions you'll get when you get to the point of like testers, because test testers will ask that stuff like, oh, did you, are you supposed to pick up the stitches on this side or this side first? And you're like, well, I don't, I don't know. And you'll have to make it up and then that's sad. Uh, and then you still have people who don't read the patterns, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How to be a good test knitter, read the pattern. Um, you're gonna wanna measure everything too, because your tech editor is gonna be like, well, how much, like what, what, what's the measurement of, you know, the bricks like before blocking. And you're like, I don't know, I didn't measure the bricks before blocking. And she's like, well, it doesn't, like this stitch count doesn't match the gauge that you specified in the pattern. And you're like, shit. So you can either fudge it, which I have done, or you can knit another one.
And that is, you don't want to have to do that. <laughs> um, and then you'll get like all the way to the end and you've written up your pattern and whatever. And like, it just won't work out the way you thought it would. Like I, I have, for like every pattern that I've created, there's like five more that I, that just never made it because like I used, when I first started designing, I made this cowl that I was going to call the spicy flies cowl because it used a, a stitch pattern that looked like little, like little wings. Yeah. Um, but when I got to the end of the pattern, like I, you know, I made my thing and I blocked it and whatever. And the edges kept like just curled and I couldn't get it to lay flat and just wasn't doing what I wanted to. And also the dye bled. So like I was using red yarn with a like a light colored border and the red yarn bled into the into the light colored border. And I was like, I guess like I. I can't, I can't make a pattern of this because it's cursed. So I'm sure that I haven't actually asked anybody, but I'm sure that like other people who design stuff, it's like have many projects that just never make it to the, uh, you know, the full pattern stage. Um, did I say to measure everything? Yes, I did. Uh, da, 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 da. you're gonna, okay, you've got your pattern, you've got your notes, you've got your measurements. So then you need to write, write everything down. You need to like put it in pattern format. So like if you've read a knitting pattern before, you know that it starts out with like all the information about what yarn the designer used, what needles, you know, are recommended, the gauge, um, the suggested yarn, uh, what other notes are in there? Um, they might have like notes for like uh, tips and tricks, like the for the hitchhiker, the little um, stitch marker tip, things like that. Um, and you know, you know, like okay, row one, uh, knit three, yarn over, knit two together. You know, like you know, I mean, you know how to write. You, if you can read a pattern, you can write one um, with your little. Uh, abbreviations. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to talk about all the resources that I use. Like, uh, I'll tell you how to find a tech editor, how to find um, uh, test knitters, um, the software that I use, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think if you've ever written anything, I don't know, maybe nobody else struggles with this, but I tend to be really wordy and I'll write way more than I actually need to. And so one of the hardest things for me is figuring out, okay, what is actually crucial to the knitter's understanding of this pattern and what is like superfluous that I can take out and mm -hmm. cut back. And testers and tech editors are really helpful with that, um, with telling you like, this is, this is unnecessary or you need more information here, this is unclear. Uh, so I totally recommend, even if you think you're like, I'm just a beginner, I'm a novice, you know, I'm, I'm not ready for uh, a tech editor. No, everyone is ready for a tech editor. Your tech editor is gonna help you. Uh, they're like a teacher that will help you write a better pattern. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, jump right into tech editing. If you wanna make like a collection of patterns, you can take um, a stitch pattern or a technique that you used in one pattern and repeat it in different garment shapes. So like at one point I was gonna make a Hildebrandt hat and it had this like cute um, pico edge and then like the lace design and I really like I need to dig that out and finish it because it, it was going to be really cute or like um, the retro whirl set that I have the cowl and the hat are you know they it's the same technique and the same um, increases and decreases so you can like make it a set and Stephen West is really good about doing that where he's got like the painting bricks shawl, hat, sweater, scarf. Like it's, you know, it's just the same stitch pattern used plugged across. into different garments, yeah. yeah. Although I think he has a team of- I think he does like team. Knitters he... for sure, sample knitters and probably like designers too, um, to like do all the boring like pattern writing and the mm -hmm. gauge swatching and whatever. So that was a lot of information really fast. Um, if you have questions or like something I talked about is not clear, leave a comment on this episode and I'll 
address them in the next um, in the next episode. So you have done a little bit of pattern design. I have. Um, I took a few sweater classes, um, and I have to say, either I need to start, which is definitely true, doing shawls or hats or something before mm. I get to sweaters, or my brain is not like made for math in any mm. form, and it um, so it, it did not make sense. And of course, <laughs> like the people teaching, well, this is the I mean, and for them it is they have been doing it a while sure. and you know every i think i took two or three from different instructors like their way that they did it you know was easy to them mm-hmm. and it doesn't work with my brain yeah. so and it could be that i need to work up to that and learn like how to you know do the basic thing mm-hmm. across a cowl instead of yeah. jumping into sweaters but i was going to the conference and i wanted to learn about sweaters so mm-hmm. i did and i learned they're very hard. <laughs> yeah. Then I did take one um, and start designing a little teeny like swatch and I need to pick it back up. Uh, Susan B. Anderson is who I took a shawl class with. It was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you know her, she does um, <clears throat> now, excuse me, she does a lot of um, stuffed animal design. Um, and that's my polar bear that I have to finish. Um, so this is her. And then she also has um, a yarn company with her family. So they sell her patterns. They sell kits for the animals. Cute. And then the yarn is gorgeous. Um, so look out for that. Um, but yeah, if you ever have a chance to take a class from her. Um, and I also took um, multiple classes from Patty Lyons. And she is hmm. amazing. Um, and the same, um, I think I did take one about, I definitely took a sweater design which was above my head and that was just my fault for jumping in. <laughs> um, but I think I did like an edging one or like t- like she does like general kind of like tips mm-hmm. like to make things better, to make things I think fit better, to how to like adjust patterns kind of mm-hmm. one. Um, anything, I mean, I think it took three or four classes and they were all fantastic. Yeah. So. Uh, if you're in Cleveland, the North Coast Knitting Guild um, does, like I said, every year they have a designer or a teacher come in and do um, classes. I forget who they're doing this year, um, but all the classes are virtual. So if they're, I know it's like 15 bucks a person if you're in the guild, uh, if you're a member, and then like $25 per person per class uh, for non-members. And then look at, I've taken a few good ones at Great Lakes before I was dying. Um, I took one about like, be, you know, adding the beads in. Mm. It was so interesting. So yeah, look at any, if you're going to any shows, just look ahead and you can sign up for mm-hmm. classes too. And it's kind of nice to have something yeah. extra to do. I would take classes all the time. I love like learning new stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I have like, I've got my little thing of beads from my bead class mm-hmm. over there. <laughs> like I just I love like beading. learning new stuff. Oh my gosh, beading is so much fun. Let's see. So anyway, I need to pick up my little design little thing. So mm-hmm. it was um, sh- you learn different shapes, like a, like a crescent shawl, a okay. triangle shawl, mm-hmm. and like kind of the basic like how to design like basic ones, which mm-hmm. was good for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's I'm done. <laughs> that's all I got. Like I said, mm. I have we I've got a whole another episode planned where where I'll give you like all the like business stuff like today I feel like was the creative side of pattern design and then I'll talk more about um the actual like the businessy part uh in the next episode um I have some yarn okay oh yeah so um since I probably am not going to come cut, I have some geeky sets and I only had time to um twist up one of them um but I have, they're all sparkle and they're all gonna be geeky, like fandom things. And I was trying to think of like new stuff that I've been obsessed with and only murders in the building. Did you watch that? Steve Martin and um, Martin Short and um, Selena Gomez. And the character, like the character design and like the sets and the costume, everything is like really well done. So I did, um, it was really easy to be able to like pick a color for each of them. Mm-hmm. So Selena Gomez has this like big puffy, almost looks like a teddy bear kind of coat and it's real bright orange. Mm. So that's her. And then um, Steve Martin, he's kind of like 
more looked like toned down, boring kind of guy. So he always <laughs> wears blue and gray. Mm-hmm. So that's him. And then Martin Short is a little more flamboyant. He was like a Broadway producer. And I got a picture of him and he has like a purple like wool, like a longer coat with like a splash of color, like, like with like a scarf, like mm-hmm. a silk scarf. So he's like the purple. Like, cool. So, um, so they're really fun to do. So I'm, um, I have, I think maybe eight different sets right now. Oh. Um, so I did, um, and I'm still like fussing around mm-hmm. with them because it is kind of hard. Even I'm glad I didn't do like a five pack. Cause that would have been really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I have uh, like a Mandalorian one. I did, um, oh my gosh, um, Alien, which is my favorite, and she's <laughs> named after Sigourney Weaver. Um, and Hellboy, like um, the Ron Perlman Hellboy is one of my favorite, favorite movies. So um, super, super fun. And so, so if there, if you're not at Comic Con, those will be on. These your are going to be on, yeah, the next um, shop update, which I'll need a little bit more stuff to do that. Um, for the Comic Con, I didn't even get a full booth. I got like a table, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't have needed that much stuff anyway. And um, I did a few um, like special ordery things, and those are done. So yeah, coming up, I've got to do a little bit more. And if it doesn't go to Comic Con, it's going on the site, and it will be at um, Great Lakes. Because I need to start dying for that, even though it's hmm. like six weeks away. But it'll come around really fast. And then I'm a Star Wars nerd, so um, my brother actually helped me with a lot of these. Um, this is Tatooine, which is the planet that Luke um, grew up on, and then they visit like back. So it's like mm-hmm. a sandy planet. So um, that's a great like, neutral. Yeah, I know it turned out so nice. So very like. Um, Sandy was mm-hmm. pretty much it because it's like a big desert planet. So I'm really happy with the way that turned out. I could see like a like a really nice sweater in that. Yeah, that'd be really pretty. Yeah. Um, so I did four different Star Wars planets with um, like inspiration like that. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, gonna work on some other stuff and we'll see. But it's kind of fun. To, I haven't really done like any like fan type stuff mm-hmm. like yeah so it is it's cool. to, like it helps with like the inspiration yeah because you can yeah you don't have to just think of a color like off the top of your yeah, head you yeah. be like well i want to adjust it a little that's why i went to like for the flare club when i first started it last year i was just like drawing whatever and you know it was really hard to like come up with different ideas every month um so for 2022 we went to like every quarter is a different theme so like the first one was sea creatures and i like that narrowed it it it. narrowed down yeah you know i knew i only had to draw sea creatures and now is april we're going into um sweet treats so it was like desserts and candy and ice cream and stuff like that so uh it'll be time to pick the the next um theme here soon um and i have one more thing which is i adjusted my um yarn club which is for yarn shops so if you know any yarn shops who might like um it's like a six pack i found these really nice boxes that fit them like exactly so they come in like this little like it's like shaped kind of like a pizza box like Mm -hmm. the top like lifts up it's really cute um so a lot of shops were saying they were like stocked up on sock yarn so i switched it to dk Mm -hmm. as soon as i switched it to dk it was out of stock for like three months nice. which was, so I've had these postcards um, and then I had um, a list of yarn shops across the country and so I just sent these like three days ago so I sent it to 110 different yarn shops oh. so I'm hoping to get um, it's like a little subscription where you get a different one each month so I've done um, Stitch and Skein and Marion mm-hmm. um, she's been getting it and this will be the fourth month of the new box so I'd like to sign up some more yarn shops um so that's on the website and then it'll be a different color each month Mm -hmm. oh i have a super fun uh announcement yay for flare club so kick-ass flare club is getting more flare uh currently we have pins enamel pins and we have vinyl stickers and i'm now i'm adding iron-on patches oh my god so if you have like yeah denim jacket that you you know need some silly swear words on it or um like you're a 
I'm gonna have um, tote bags, uh, so you can, you know, like you can iron on your your swear word uh, donuts and whatever, <laughs> and your tote, put on a tote bag, uh, your backpack. Um, I personally don't use patches, or at least I haven't yet. I've never, like, I don't have a denim jacket. I don't, I'm not cool enough for one. Uh, but people have been telling me, hey, patches, patches, patches. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. So in April, um, we'll, April will be the first month that will be the donut talk to me, donut. And then um, May will be the barely listening gummy bear. Yeah, so we'll have, um, I haven't like, I haven't put that on Instagram yet, announced it as of today. I haven't mentioned it. Hopefully by Friday, I'll be ready to um, mention it. But like if you're in a tier uh, and you wanna get in on the patches for April, make sure you change, either upgrade or downgrade your mm -hmm. tier, uh, your Patreon tier before the end of the month. Um, all of the first quarter sea creatures uh, Flare is in the Patreon secret shop. Um, there's a link for that on my Patreon page, the link and the password. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's it for Flare Club. I'm really excited. I probably don't seem that excited for patches because I'm getting tired, uh, but I am excited. I'm, I'm going really hard on Patreon this year. I'm, I want to make it you know, I want to grow my Patreon. Um, it's probably my favorite part of my business besides this podcast. Wow. <laughs> uh, so you're going to see a lot of changes. I've got a lot of fun plans um, to make Patreon even better. Uh -huh. Books? Yeah. I <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> no, oh, are you like, laughing at Yes, books and then silence. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about books, but I wish I had read some more good ones. Um, yeah. I did do a screenshot um, since the beginning, and I can show you. That's the um, oh, cool. cover of the one I've been using. Okay. Can you, can you see it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Keep that up because I feel like it's easier to not show the uh, lights if I turn it like the wrong way. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so there's that. So if you're interested in. It's it's so interesting. I've just been so I am the, interested in that, and I'm gonna get that book. And the, okay, I'm I was gonna, gonna say now. if you um, I can make you some to start off with. <gasps> okay, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> the standout standout book I read this past two weeks, and it was audiobook, and the author read it, which just makes such mm. a difference. Like you know, and there were like voices. There's two kids in it, and the one the younger boy he has a lisp, mm. and it's he does. All of these voices, they're all fantastic. Aww. It is funny. It's sweet. Uh, I, I cannot say enough about this book. It's um, And this was one I saw on TikTok, The Gunkle by Stephen Rowley. And it's, it's everything you want it to be. Um, his best friend, um, a woman from like college, and they lived together, um, ended up marrying his brother. He is a TV, I'm sorry, the, the main guy, um, he's gay, and he is, he was on a really successful, like, friends level, like, sitcom, which okay. is over now. Um, and he's had some tragedy in his life and has kind of become, like, kind of, like, stepped back from the public eye and being friends um, with his high school, sorry, college friend, not as close with his family anymore. Um, the, um, I don't want to give too much away. Anyway, he needs to take care of, for a summer, he takes care of the two kids. Okay. And he's kind of been estranged from the family. So this is like a way to like get to know them. It's lovely and funny and touching. And there's nothing more I could ask for in a book. I would just have to say. It sounds um, really cute. I Yeah, I would talk about it for 10 minutes, but I don't want to <laughs> give too much away besides like everyone and just like almost like, you know, being in therapy and things and thinking about like, you know, like things you're trying to make better. Like everyone, like he he's in that point where he wasn't trying to make anything in his life better. Mm -hmm. He was out in the desert alone and that was fine. And he was, ha you know, I'm happy doing this. This is, this is what I mm. do. And then all of these extra things came into his life mm -hmm. and he realized how much he was missing out on. Aww. Ugh. It's, it's just fantastic. 
It smells really cute. So, yeah. What a fun cover. It's also. such a good cover because this is his um like little mod. And then we get a rescue dog. A dog. Oh, I love dogs. So, yeah, I have been reading, I don't know, a bunch of turds. Um, I, I don't I've, know, like, I don't know what it's been. But, yeah, the last couple episodes were, like, everything, every book that we pick up sucks. I've stopped, like, 15 books. Yeah. Like, nope, bye. I finally went um, went back to my old standby Nevada bar, and I read the next book. Did I talk about this the last the I last knew you did talk about it in the Nevada bar. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, like, of course it was really good. And I feel like that sort of got me out of the, out of my... Slump. Yeah, the slump, the pit of despair, reading despair. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm in a mood for, like, rope, uh, like, suspense and, like, mystery or whatever. So I read Naked in Death by J.D. Robb, who, a.k.a. Nora Roberts. And I was going into this, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, I'd never read any J.D. Robb because I feel like with like bestsellers and like the really popular names, like they start out, you know, their their early books are like really good. And then they're just like churning them out, you know, two books a year or one book a year or whatever, just to make money. And the books suck and whatever. So I'd been avoiding um, J.D. Robb and I that was a mistake. I I really I enjoyed this book. Um so the premise, uh, it's it was published in 1994. It's the 20, I, I just heard it was the 25 year anniversary or whatever. I'm like, oh God. So it's a, it's a romantic suspense uh, genre and it's set in the near future 2058 in New York City. Uh, the characters, the main character is Eve Dallas and she's a cop. She's like a gritty, like she's a New York City cop. She's she's a badass and you know no emotions and whatever and then she gets uh the hero is um i forget his first name his last name is rourke he's like an they a, mostly call him Rourke. yeah, yeah he's like a, a lightly irish uh billionaire uh and they like get mixed up in this case together he's like a suspect for a while and so he like helps her out and um you know he's got to prove his innocence and whatever um and the the like murder or whatever the case they're working on is um, a serial killer is targeting sex workers. Um, so I'm not gonna like go into the plot or whatever, but I wanted to mention. So being written in 1994, like, and set in the near future, like I think my favorite part of this book was the imagined like futuristic technology. So, like, there were, you know, obviously there's flying cars, which, like, can we talk about how we don't have those yet? It's really annoying. Um, oh, it's flying and self-driving cars. Um, they had, they have uh, Telelink communicators, which sort of sounds like FaceTime, like, or like a Zoom call where it's like a video chatting. Um, they have personal Palm computers, which are different it's a totally different device than her pocket di her pocket directory and her electronic date book. Like these are different devices. Um, and then they also had uh, like smart devices controlled by voice. So like she would be like, Alexa, turn the lights on or whatever. And But it wouldn't be Alexa because it was 1994. Right. Um, and then, so like that was really fun, but there, th this book was just full of triggers. Um, like every, sexual violence trigger you could think of is in this book. Um, there's pedophilia, there's sexual assault, there's rape, there's um, like aggravated murder, there's, what else did I put? Oh, just even just like regular old sexism. There's a bunch of that too. Um, and the characters really seem to have problems with like respecting each other's boundaries. Uh, and like there were tons of issues of consent um, so like, she'd be like, don't kiss me, Rourke. And then he'd be like, you, yeah, okay. And then he, <laughs> they'd be like making out. And it's like, you know, it's like the, in the old timey romance novels of like forced seduction or whatever, where like, she doesn't want it, but like, really she does. Um, but that I know can be a problem for a lot of readers. Uh, and there's also quite a bit of uh stigma around mental health and sex work so like they use words like shrinks and hookers 
Um, and then the last problem I had with it was the lack of diversity and heteronormativity. So there's like, everyone is straight and white, the end. Um, but if you can get past all of those issues, it's it was a fun book. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the series evolves as we like get into, you know, as like our society, real society changes. I'm interested to see how the society in the book um, changes with the technology and the, you know, um, you know, you know, mm -hmm. what am I? Okay, great. <laughs> so I read this a while ago, so I don't remember a ton. Um, and I probably read the first five or six. Mm -hmm. um, I just checked while you were talking. Um, book 54 just came out oh in my February. God. She is a beast. And that's um, just one series. That's only one series. Uh, Nora Roberts, and she was just on my favorite romance book podcast, Faded Mates, which is Sarah <laughs> McLean mm -hmm. and Jen Prokov. Um, they have been interviewing, um, they call it trailblazers. So mm -hmm. um, they've been doing, um, they did, did Beverly Jenkins. Mm. Um, they, they've done like so many people. I learned so much from these. So they were so excited to have Nora. Yeah. So just her, it was very interesting. And she talked about this. She wanted to write, she ha she started writing historical or she started writing, I forget. She, she wasn't interested in like writing regular kind of romances. She wanted to do mm. romantic suspense and mm. she got popular enough where she could do what she wanted. Oh, good. Good for and her. And then like the choice to like have the JD Robb series like be separate was like a, like a choice so that it, mm -hmm. you know, it was, um, you know, kind of marketed differently. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think like at the time, like people were saying, well, no one's going to read like a romance with like future, you know, kind of mm. futuristic stuff and no one's going to want this or that. And of course, everyone's wrong and she's, yeah, yeah, she knew like what makes, like what's the right formula. Um, so much in this interview that was so interesting. Um, she was plagiarized, like big time plagiarized mm. by a well-known writer multiple times. And pretty much like the romance industry, like we're like, like her agent and their agent. And we're like, not her agent, but, um, like, I don't know, the RWA in general and mm -hmm. like her representation were like, let's just keep this kind of quiet. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, you know, like this is awful. It happened in like so many books. So that's super crazy. interesting. Yeah. So anyway, um, she who was the, who's the plagiarizer? Janet Daly. I don't know that name. But now I'm going to have like to look 80s, it up. Like, hmm. And then um, they were saying it happened again. There was a Brazilian writer who plagiarized like 60 different. Um, romance writers and there was a whole thing about that like years ago so she said that's how Sarah McLean had met her because they both talked about like this woman plagiarizing their stuff and how like you know there's it's just a very difficult mm -hmm. situation so anyway oh is that the it's, end okay yeah sorry <laughs> um, my I guess my wrap up is people think about Nora Roberts like they do about Stephen King but there's a reason they're Nora Roberts and Stephen King that, because right. there's a like they're good at what they do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she. I think she writes like five books. I don't know if they said five, six books a year. Holy crap. She said they asked her about this interview and she said, well, I could schedule it. We have to schedule on the weekends because she writes like she has a very strict like writing schedule during the week. Yeah. Wow. I can't even imagine. I did. I wrote a book once. It was a romance novel. I did uh, NaNoWriMo which is National Novel Writing Month. And I wrote for an hour every day for a month. And I was like, this is torture. I'm never doing oh. this again. <laughs> I'm a terrible writer. <laughs> I'm a good reader. Yep. They're different skills. Really? They are. Um, <laughs> so I was talking last time, my disappointing um, suspense. I was talking about romantic suspense. Um, I went back and read the second in the book of the one that I did really like, um, so this is Uncharted by Adriana Anders. And the first one I liked, it was like the Arctic. They were like running with like the virus and they were oh, catching yeah. it. So fun, very sexy. Um, this one, I didn't quite like as much, hmm. but it was good. It's, um, she's a pilot. Um, 
she's on a team that still is trying to track down all of the rest of this virus. So this is set in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Um, She pairs up with this guy um, who had gotten mixed up in it like years ago and he was hiding out um, and they're running from bad guys. And I mean, there are like runs across frozen lakes where the the, like ice is like breaking up. There's mountain hiking. There's, (laughs) I mean, there's, they, they go up against it. Um, and you know it, it it is it's what you want from this kind of book, but which I still, is still, which is danger banging. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> which I put in the notes. In <laughs> you know, I laughed so hard. hard. <laughs> but yes, that's what I want from this. And so it was it was good in that way. And it's cool because she was a tough pilot, and she worked on like a like they're all like retired military, and they like go around mm-hmm. and fix things. So. Um, and I've got one more quick one, which is a graphic novel I have at work um, for my book podcast book drops. Um, we're having some guest stars come up and I'm doing, um, I have a few ones coming up. I have a romance one. I have a short story one. Um, and I have a teen LGBTQ um one coming up and so I got some I wanted to do some middle age books and some graphic novels um so this mooncake is really cute I think I posted this like got me out of like a little slump mm-hmm. because it was very um short and cute and um witchy mm-hmm. so I really really liked it um by Wendy Zhu and Suzanne Walker I love comics for getting out of a book Gosh, a so book good. slump there because yeah they're, it's quick it's fat like it's not a ton of reading and they're, they're like there's pictures and yeah i like um do you know there's a comic sarah anderson she does like the uh it's like a millennial with crazy hair and big round eyes and the striped shirt i should and i can't think of no, i'll put i'll put a link i'm sure you've seen it you'd recognize it but she um i like to read her books uh cuz yeah they're just They'll just get you. I mean, because then you've got something under your belt. You're kind of on a roll. You're back in the swing. Yeah. Love graphic novels. Just trying to pull it up. Oh, is it the, yep. like these? Yep, yep. Okay. Nice. I have seen, like. Yeah, Sarah Anderson. Mm-hmm. So that's all She's I fun. Have. Yeah. Okay. I only did one book because it's been a rough. Was, I had a lot of stuff I wanted to talk about about naked and death. Um, I like as I'm like reading it. I was I read it on my Kindle, and so I was like taking notes. I would like highlight fun passages, you know, with the like the silly like technology or whatever, and then I'd make a note. I'm like, this is a phone. Like she needs her phone, but she didn't know that it was a phone, you know, in 1994. So yeah, that was a fun read despite all of its problems, but like, I don't know. It's hard to do, like, yeah, I wanna be like, oh, we have to give that book a pass because it was 1994. Or like, you know, people are like, well, yeah, race, there's so much racism in uh, Gone with the Wind, but like, that was what it was for the time. Like, yeah, but I don't know. It, it's, what am I saying? It's like a fine line. Like, do we do we give the book a pass? Do we hold it accountable? Like, I don't know. I think going into it, you just have to pay attention to like knowing that okay this book has this issue and yeah yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a different experience than reading something that's published in 2022 for example so all right cool well keep uh posting your uh make along projects oh my god we love seeing those on instagram Uh, in the next episode we'll pick a winner uh, make sure you're subscribed we're we're getting close to a thousand um youtube subscribers which is bananas um we should do something fun yeah like a a big giveaway um when we hit that uh we've been getting a lot of followers on instagram too which is awesome thank you uh what else um let me know your questions about designing um and i'll i'll make sure i get to those in the next episode and we will see you in two weeks goodbye